everybody, welcome back. We're Game Devs Play Games, and this is Eric Blomquist. That's me. What's going on? <laughs> and and uh, we're playing Song of Seven, and I'm terrible about doing intros. I don't know why you have me do them. I really don't. <laughs> you've been fine. You've been better than Geek Areas. I guess. Um, so I think you, I think you covered it all. I mean, that's all it really matters. That's pretty much, yeah. So we'll see you next time. <laughs> what if you just yell? You're just like video games. I actually uh, I mean, have done something similar. I mean, the the other guy on the show does that a lot. So oh, okay, he, <laughs> he yells a lot. Yeah. Yes, okay. that yeah. is like he yelling is his first language. He's and he's, English is he's more of like <laughs> the the team comedian than the game designer. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> he's gonna not wait for him to see this episode. <laughs> oh man. So, so last we left off, we were basically collecting components to build a tonic to help our sick father feel better. So that's psychosomatically. Yeah. Because as Uta pointed out, it's just a bunch of herbs that they just kind of put in a bottle and say it's a tonic. Yep. Yeah, Which the is thing hilarious for the record. <laughs> that's what's really you know what you know you eventually find out is that there really isn't anything scary. Mm -hmm. There's there's nothing. There you're all being crazy. Yeah, but it's you know the, the fears of the world and stuff. That's right. But that's a, that's a normal thing that I think I, you know everyone goes through. I mean, b because of that, the entire time I just want you to know the entire time I was playing this game, I was expecting the worst thing to happen at any point. That's amazing. Just, like, that's amazing. It, it had me on constant well, paranoia. I'm like, is this where the worst thing happens? Is this maybe I play too much Banner Saga and I'm just always <laughs> expecting the worst thing to happen? Well, I don't that's know. that's why later on in this Banner game, Saga. You mean best game of 2014? Ooh. We're not gonna spoil anything, but there <laughs> there's a point later on where you do truly face your fears, and that's why at that point I was like, this is it. This is where everything goes wrong. <laughs> And things, uh, the, the the biggest thing is I that I want to do is at each chapter I want there's gonna be years in between each one. Oh, okay. So we're gonna mm. see him age. You know, he's not just uh. gonna be like 16, 17 years old for the remaining five chapters. Oh, uh, you know, we don't get to see a Stardust style montage where you learn how to sword fight in like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Now I'm gonna do a montage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm an 80s kid. I love montages. <laughs> I mean, really, montages should never die. <laughs> I watched Bloodsport, like, every day growing up, so... <laughs> I want to see Frank Dukes doing the splits and, you know, training in the temples. Yes. <laughs> uh, Fantastic. I do want to point out, by the way, that um, this bucket that we're using to get water out was right next to the night house. And now we're about to make a potion out. I just wanted to point that out. You know, no one's figured out the outhouse guy yet. No one's... Ah. Wait, is there a secret with him? Well, no one... I mean, maybe. Just but no who one's... is it? Who's in the, who's in the you know, okay. you That's know when... true! Oh! Yeah. You're right! I mean, okay, let's let's show everyone right now, because, like... Also we... counts one. What? Well, at some point, there's a mention of about how many people live in the town, and... I, at some point, I was like, who is, is the number off? Yeah, that's fair. But yeah, you go up to the outhouse and it says, I'll be out in five minutes, I swear. And, you know, question marks over his name. But like, throughout the entirety of the game, you, you never... Have you kept clicking on it? Huh? Have you kept clicking on it? No. I did not. I did it for a few times and then I was like, eh. Splash. Oh, that, that's a good one. Oh, no. What did I eat? <laughs> I'll be a while longer. Ugh, I caught a damn cold. Do you know? Does anyone know what that's from? Mm -mm. Did you ever play Metal Gear Solid One? Yeah. Remember when you were crawling around the vents, and there was Johnny, who who like made appearances in later games. He would always have some sort of intestinal issue, and if you would go to him, he was like, he'd be like, "Ugh, caught a damn cold." <laughs> so that was just a little throwaway line that I put in there. That's fantastic. Beautiful. Spicy. Spicy. Are you enjoying listening to this? <laughs> I mean, I think that's when I walked away. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> it won't stop coming out. Should I have Ciara weld a patch? <laughs> Echoing, extending fart noise. Almost there, I think. Oh, wait. Nope, never mind. How are you even still alive? <laughs> I don't remember eating that. Man, you had fun writing dialogue I, for this. Yeah, it was... It burns, oh, it burns. Oh, and it get, you get an achievement. You do. Concerned neighbor. <laughs> I'll be out in five minutes. 
<laughs> so is that it loops? All. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, but no one's no one's figured out who Potty Guy is. You know, I like that I though. Sh uh, now I'm gonna have to take a look out because uh, one thing that you also did with the dialogue is every character's uh, text is in a different color. I yes. really like that. Oh, cool. Some, I mean, some of the colors for those of us that are colorblind, it's not always so favorable. Um, like, I, I had a little hard time with the uh, the potty guy there, but like, other than that, There's I think it, the brown, it gives, yeah, yeah, I think it gives a lot of like extra flavor. I saw in your Kickstarter videos you used to so have little just, like you just said something that is actually correlated. Ooh, think what? about what you just said. Colors. What did you say? The and, colors, the colors of the dialogue. Colors of the dialogue and like what their personality? Or no. like you're so you're saying we were talking about earlier, but who the potty guy is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So So his dialogue. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Wait. <laughs> See, that's what I was gonna say. Now we have to, now I'm gonna have to watch all the dialogue. To now see I have who it theories. Is. <laughs> I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna figure out who potty guy is. I'm gonna be the first. I'm gonna be special. Because <laughs> remember when you go back to the village. Doors open when you go back. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. and they're not driving anymore. me crazy, man. <laughs> That's good though. That's great. Like, oh man, it was right in front of me the whole time. Anyway, we're gonna give this guy a potion. Thanks, son. That's. Dash. Can I tell you how much fun I had animating his mustache? Oh man, I can't even begin to imagine. I, I mean, you've got a lot of personality in the animations in general. Thank you. Um, animations like animation and, and design are like my my two things that I think that are my that I enjoy doing. Kind of really work yeah. those two together then. Absolutely, <laughs> but like animating this guy's mustache is like animating a mustache to have personality. I, it I is. love too that you can't see his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a anime is a definitely a huge part of, was a huge part of my life growing up. So there's definitely a lot of like anime influence in in my designs. Kind of pulled like a, a Brock there. Yep. In case you're wondering, no, he's actually never opened his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you talk a bit about like the process of making the art for the game and kind of like um, how you? I, I guess like really whatever you want to talk about as far as that goes, but like maybe like how you start and how you get to this point. I know that's a really big topic, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Um, it's 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 a really interesting question because I'm going to do it differently moving forward. Really? Yes. Ah. Um, because of what I've learned. Um, oh. But just just to kind of talk about what's going on right now, um, Kiba went to go fix this. Uh, the storm basically split their fence open, and from what we've gathered about the all the people in the village, they're scared of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so immediately, Talor, Kiba's father, asked him to go fix the fence, and when he goes to fix it, he meets this girl, Emma, who's on the other side, who is... <laughs> just hanging things. out, just hanging spying out. on the village. Yeah, she's creepy. <laughs> it was very creepy the first yeah. time it turned. You're like, oh, that is that is creepy. <laughs> but it's supposed it's supposed to be kind of creepy. It is, because it's a stranger. It's the first time you see yeah. anybody that's not lived in your village. And she doesn't have a tail. That was the first thing I picked up on, actually. I was like, she doesn't have a tail. Does that make her not, like monkey-ish like us. So do you want me to talk about why I designed them like this? Like why I designed characters with pointy ears and tails? Absolutely. For a specific Please. reason. Um, going back to what I was talking about from the first episode uh, about the first chakra is about your tribe. It's it's rooted in your, our uh, most tribal and um, what's the other word I'm looking for? You know, our, our base, our, instincts. our instinct, our base instinct. So I wanted it to be more animalistic. You know, I didn't. I didn't want this race mm. of people to be uh, intellectually in, uh, uh, evolved. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it's more. They're more physically. Uh, they have more physical prowess than they do intellectual prowess. So, in a way, she sort of represents that evolution. Hmm. Which I mean makes a lot of sense compared, like, with her personality and what she does and everything like that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of stuff even in this first chapter that isn't going to be explained mm -hmm. probably for a, a while. Uh, I mean, that's that's good. You're leaving the the um, the breadcrumb trail, the crumb 
Red truck. Whatever it is. Well, especially like, oh, I, I feel like leaving a lot of those questions unanswered is important to make the games even feel connected because you're making them in chapters. Yes. Um, so if you just answer everything and make every chapter it's like nice, like uh, self contained package, then. I don't know, I, I feel it, like it makes each chapter feel disjointed. Mm. Whereas, like, leaving some things started in, you know, one chapter and answered in, may, you know, many later, I feel like justifies the entire experience. Yes. Agreed. At least from a narrative standpoint. Yeah. But, we, I mean, we did chapters for, you know, for a couple reasons. Um, but mainly because it allowed us to make a, a grander scale game. Because every chapter after this is going to be in a, it's going to be older. It's going to be in a completely new location. You know, every I mean, it's going to be vastly different than this. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's not going to be in, in the woods. It's going to be the ice level. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, but even from the a, underwater level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. But even from a production standpoint, I think it makes a lot of sense for an indie studio to do it like this yeah. because. You know, you, you ran a Kickstarter and your goal is $8,000. Right. Like, I'm even amazed that you were able to use that $8,000 to make this game finished. <laughs> I want to say you how dramatic, <laughs> want to say how dramatic and beautiful, perfect moment that was. You're talking about him, Kickstarter, and at that very moment, Kiva just walked through the fence into the new world. Honestly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was also my way of interrupting and be like, oh, yeah, we're also running out of time for the episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are. Do you Stop have a question again. of the day? No. <laughs> Um, okay, well, we can end it here. Uh, I should have a question of the day, then. I guess it's my turn anyway. Mm -hmm. Unless you have one. I was trying. I was actually trying to think of one. Um, oh, man. I mean, I guess I guess we could even... Uh, well, you look like you had something. No, no, I was going to say the developer gets to ask the players the questions. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I, I could ask them how they would do something differently. You could. Interesting. I um, mean, we, we could talk about. I don't know if you want that answer though. <laughs> no. You, you could. See, ask that's that. a, what we were talking about earlier. That's. I mean, that's a topic in itself because it's like every every person would make something totally different, mm -hmm. but then it wouldn't be the same game. It would be just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, absolutely. It doesn't necessarily mean that we better or worse or whatever. It can just be different. Well, I guess in that regard, then I'll come up with the question of the day. And uh, you mentioned talking about um, going back to the roots and to the instincts that, and and that's what you the first chakra is about, yes. right? So in that regard, uh, mm -hmm. with with the main character and all and the 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 village that he lives in being being like that, having that the pointy ears and the tail, like closer to like an animal, in regards to the person that is clearly a human. Um, how do you feel that changes the dynamic of what the main character is and what they're going to be, like, what they could become later on? Because there does seem to be, like, that form of, I guess, evolution? Is or, I'm not really So maybe sure. the question can be, um, what are some ways that you use um, aesthetics to drive narrative? Wow. Specifically... Character aesthetics? Character yeah. aesthetics. I like that, actually. Yeah, through design so, and animation. It's a lot more concise of a <laughs> way to put it. <laughs> I just opened the door. He walked through this one. <laughs> well, thank you for watching, everyone. Be sure to share your comments in the, the comment section below. Is I know that, that where was they go? redundant. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you can tell us your answer on Twitter. It I might feel that's true. And I'm just going to rabble on for about an hour. Oh, no, 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 not yet. We're not ready for this. Ready for what? Uh... So, thank you for watching. Be sure to follow Eric on Twitter at thewillofb.com. Link down not below. .com. Wait, no, I mean it's technically .com, but at the will of B. Yeah, well, we'll have a link in the description. But be sure to follow him, and then, I mean, if you haven't yet, I mean, go go buy Song of Seven because we're not going to do the full playthrough. So you got to no, you got to play. It we're we're going to play some more still, obviously. But and you get to hear this beautiful music on your own. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I'm I think you should buy it next time. Play it. <laughs> Support this guy. <laughs> Then you could have more. Well, it's going to happen no matter what, but. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.